Malta has served an important base for the Royal Navy's Mediterranean fleet. The squadron of ships had one goal, that of protecting the sea links between Britain and other bases in the east. On, so on some occasions, the fleet HQ of the Commander-in-Chief of the Mediterranean fleet were based on Malta, both at HMS St. Angelo and HMS Phoenicia. Today we know them as Fort St. Angelo and Fort Montmel, respectively. The dockyard served also as an important role in the, in the, in the storage of for important supplies for the ships, with the result of heightened naval activity in these areas. As one would expect, the fascination and grandiose of the fleet captured the imagination of aspirants. Generations of Maltese families also served with the Royal Navy and Merchant Navy, both in peace and in times of war. While the uniforms regulations for officers were issued late in the 18th century, the uniforms for ratings, the non-officers branch of the Royal Navy, were established in 1857. The Navy at the time felt that the need to establish a standard uniform across all ships and establishments was very much needed. At this time, several ships had to, had to source their own uniforms and there was often great variety between ships, something that the Admiralty wanted to solve ASAP. Today we will have a closer look at the uniforms of the ratings of the Royal Navy. As already mentioned, it was introduced in the 1850s and to a certain degree kept, remained relatively unchanged up until the end of the 20th century. Ratings in simple terms are the normal sailors of the Royal Navy and also encompasses petty officers as well. The main, I, the main items of uniform for the ratings as we're showing here were the jumper which was worn on top of a white flannel shirt and also had a, but, um, had a dickey which was worn around the waist and worn over the shoulder, over the neck. From the 19th century going into the 20th century, the jackets followed certain trends of fashion. However, um, with the exception of perhaps tighter fit, it still remained unchanged. Several trials went on to adopt a zipper before the outbreak of World War II. However, the Admiralty chose to um, not adopt this feature and it was only in 1957 that jumpers of the Royal Navy featured zippers. This particular jacket here belonged to a, a rating um, called Jeff Barnett, which served as a telegrapher on HMS uh, Kingfisher. It was not based in Malta. However, as it happened during the end of the war, the ship was stationed here for some time. This is, this jumper is in the configuration of a number one, the dress uniform, as it features primarily golden braided insignia, whereas on everyday use, this was um, fashioned in red. On the left sleeve, we have the rank of the seaman, and also on the right, we have the trade badge, which shows that this uniform belonged to a telegraphist. On the lower right sleeve, we, one can also see um, four stripes in red, which are also referred to as Chevron's for war service. Authorized in 1943, Chevron's first became available for issue in February 1944. Together with the jumper, sailors also wore the bell-bottom trousers, which, although modified slightly over the years, they still had one very distinctive feature, which was the bell-bottom trousers below the knee. Bell-bottom trousers were of practicality in nature more than anything else. For one, they could be easily rolled up for, for seamen to, to, to scrub the floors whilst on duty. And also in the case of they went overboard, they could easily remove the trousers without being too tight. Another distinctive item of the ratings uniform is the cloth cap. The cloth caps were, by the time of the Second World War, were available both in blue for winter and also in white for summer. On, uh, around the, the cloth cap, usually they had the printed the name of the ships that they used to serve on. However, a wartime measure for security uh, um, required that onshore 
um, uh, soldiers need to wear the standard HMS uh, tally without the name of the ship.